In this next case, it's somewhat an unusually high location for a Baker cyst. Once you get beyond or proximal to the knee joint, you're usually dealing with a ganglion around the semimembranosus tendon. But this case, I believe, is just a Baker cyst that is a little bit high up, has some loose bodies, and we're able to successfully drain it. So here is our lower extremity. We are going to go through a uh, probe position regarding uh, Baker cyst. You can see here in the back of the knee that there is a little lump consistent with a pretty large Baker cyst. Here we are, we're starting an axial view with our probe, and we want to make sure to go over both the medial and lateral aspects of the Baker cyst. And now we're switching to sagittal views, where again you want to cover both the medial and lateral aspects of the cyst. This is our approach for the injection. Uh, our probe is essentially in a sagittal orientation with our needle going right under it. So this way we are in long access to the needle. And here we are aspirating some fluid out of the Baker cyst. And if there is a septum, you may have to further advance the needle, which you can see here as well, in order to get all the fluid. And here's some of the anatomy that we're going to be focusing on during this procedure. We can see a fairly sizable Baker cyst overhanging the medial gastrocnemius muscle. And here we're trying to focus on that little communication track that is between the medial gastrocnemius tendon as well as the semimembranosus tendon. Now we're putting the patient in a prone position, essentially in the position we're going to do the procedure. And again, this is what we're doing with our probe prior to the procedure to get a good assessment of the anatomy and the pathology of the Baker cyst. And in this case, this patient has several loose bodies and also a septum within the cyst as well, which you can see. And here's our probe position and needle essentially going right into the cyst. In this case, even though we did not advance the needle proximal to the septum, we were able to drain the entire cyst essentially. 51-year-old um, female here for pain in the right knee for about a couple months, no injury, pain posteriorly. She has a nice Baker cyst. Here we're starting medially. We can see a loose body there in the uh, Baker cyst. Right side of the screen is proximal, left side is um, distal. And here you can see that Baker cyst goes right above the medial gastrocnemius tendon. Very medially. We can see the semimembranosus tendon coming down and inserting on the proximal tibia. And you could easily mistake the PCL for the uh, semimembranosus tendon. And you can see that crisscross pattern between the semimembranosus tendon and the medial gastrocnemius tendon. We're going a little bit lateral, and we can see that cyst just kind of come into view there. Again, uh, loose bodies proximally in the cyst and septation distally. Now we can see the medial gastrocnemius muscle and tendon going right underneath the cyst. Now we're going to take a little axial view. Right side of the screen is medial, left side is lateral. We're starting basically above the cyst, or now we're going down. And we can see it come those loose bodies. See the communication channel. You can see it right above the medial gastrocnemius muscle. We're starting below now and we're coming up. Here's a nice view of that channel as it comes up. Here's that septum coming across. Sometimes you get a better view of the septum in, in a different plane. Just keep it keep going approximately. You can see those loose bodies form. So one thing you don't want to do, you can look at the cyst and you think that little black circle next to it is part of the cyst. It's really anisotropy of the semimembranosus tendon. It's a really nice view of the septum going across the cyst. Here we're going to start our aspiration. There's a nice reverberation artifact of the needle and it's just drained pretty, pretty easily. You can see how the tissue converges around the needle and ultrasound can help you keep your needle within the actual cyst while that tissue converges around it. Now we're just putting the cortisone in.